Good morning. You're welcome to another edition of Starting and Managing Your Business Amid COVID. My name is Eli Ayemibo. It's an initiative of the National Youth Pastor and it's designed to help everyone listening and hearing to be able to um, reasonably manage the challenge we are facing with COVID, but more importantly, to do things right going forward and have control over our finances and generate some other income by the side while we're on the pay job or to prepare for retirement and starting a business. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. We come to send it to your hand as we start today's session. Speak to our heart and give us the grace to be doer of what we're hearing and not hear us only in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we'll be looking at what value does your business create? And then we'll talk about the movement, the, the way the world has progressed into the age we are in right now, and then how to use technology to grow your business. What value does your business create? Now, if you're going to start a business, you know, last week I talked about different, um, different ways to create value. And we spoke about about 12 economic values, which is more like 12 kind of product or services that people render, most of which are services anyway. But today we're saying, either the product or service, what value does it create? When you think of value, value, when you solve problem, you create value. So a business basically is solving problem for people. So when you solve problem, you create value. So what we're discussing today is so what value does the business you are doing, what value does it create for people? How does people, what, how do people see the product or service? What do they benefit from it? What do they benefit from it? Assuming the promised benefit of the offering are appealing, there are nine common economic value that people typically consider when evaluating the potential purchase. If someone wants to buy, there are nine things you will look at. Apart from the nine, 12 options of the business, which we looked at last week, that's what are you selling? What are you selling? And that's talking about the standard form of economic value. But this time around, we are looking at if you create a product, a form of a product or service, what value does it create? And by that I mean, number one, efficacy. Number two, speed. Number three, reliability. Number four, ease of use. Number five, flexibility. Number six, status. Number seven, aesthetic appeal. Number eight, emotion. And number nine, cost. So when people want to buy your product or service, you need to understand that this product or service must create one of these economic value for them to consider it. If it doesn't create this economic value, then the chance of buying will be very low. So, when you want to, for, and this is very important because anything you are doing for people, most likely they have a way of doing it before. I said there is a way of doing that same thing before. So what you are bringing now is the speed or more efficacy or more reliability or more ease of use or, because there is a way they've been doing it. There's a way they've been doing it. If I'm speaking to a large crowd, if I'm speaking to a large crowd and I'm using my voice, I will stress myself. I'll feel tired at the end. But when I use a microphone, when I use a microphone, it makes my work easier. I don't need to put so much effort in speaking for people to hear me. I've created economic value with a microphone. Now, 
you know, there was a time that people go for go to a, a, a Ife for masters lecture. They go in the morning and come by the same day. They leave as early as six, get there around eight. I think lectures start around nine to four, and then you come back to Lagos the same day. And that happened every Saturday. Now, before then, people were going. But now someone got a bus that will carry them and that create comfort for them. And it helped them speed up the rate at which they arrive at their destination. They don't have to go and queue up at the bus stop. It has a time you must take off. If you don't get there, it will leave. And you have paid already for the month. <laughs> So when you see a drug and you see another brand of that drug, when they are marketing it, they will tell you what is doing that the other might not be able to do. Or you see there is this common advert on TV. You see, they call it regular detergent. Then you have another brand of detergent. I don't want to advertise any brand here. Another brand of detergent. And they will say, see this brand, they will use it to wash clothes. And then you see the stain in that cloth. Then they will use they still the same thing to another cloth and use this other detergent to wash the cloth, and the cloth is clean. It's said to be efficacious. It works very well. Efficacious. So when you bring something to the table that is efficacious, you create economic value. It will work well and better than others. Then speed. Speed. If I need something, you know, the ATM make life easy. I remember when I was in secondary school, we we'll go to this particular, I'm sorry, in university. I go to this particular bank in the university. We queue up, Lord. If you are going to collect money, hey, Lord have mercy. Look, you need to dedicate a whole day because the queue sometimes go outside the bank on campus. But ATM came. I don't need one queue. The speed with which I get the money is, mm, and they call it ATM, anytime money. <laughs> anytime money, automated teller machine. But people call it anytime money. So how quickly can I get it done? How quickly can I get it done? How quickly? Then the idea of reliability. In Nigeria, for example, power is not reliable. So to create reliability that you have light all the time, that you have light all the time, you know what happened? People came up with the idea of solar, idea of inverter. So for like in, a, in, in the last three years, if I'm not mistaken, three to four years, I'm not sure if I've used generator in the at home. Why? The inverter is more reliable. <laughs> the inverter is more reliable. The light is there for you to use. Even if they brought light six hours a day or three hours a day, you can you have the light for the whole day and you manage it. So the solar panel, the inverters became more reliable. So people create economic value based on reliability. Reliability. You know, so when someone wants to buy your product, one of the things that appeal to people is this economic value we are discussing today this economic value we are discussing today. And this is so important. Are you creating a product? How easy, how easy is it to use? How easy? When you compare what you have created to others, how easy? Like the, this thing we talked about last week, that you have a, it made my life become a lot easier to get a place to use for office if I don't need to incur all the rent, 
Because I probably will not use the place every day. And I pay per use. <laughs> and anytime I get there, I don't need to worry about anything. I just go into the office and use. There is ease of use. No much effort to be able to use that facility or to be able to use that gadget, to be able to use that equipment. Ease of use. Then flexibility. Our phone has made, is, is very flexible. I can be, you can do so many things with your phone today. You can call. You can send SMS. You remember in those days, I remember vividly when GSM came out and there was a program on TV and it was 2002 or 2003. And they were talking about the fact that uh, at some point with phone, we're going to be able to send mail, we're going to be able to browse. You know, it looks far-fetched at that time because the phone you have at that time, apart from SMS and call, that's all. Later, they had camera too. Later, video too. Later, then when BBM came, they can send mail and chat. Ah, then we now have the smartphones. <laughs> Flexibility. You have one device. It can do so many things at the same time. So many things at the same time. Flexibility. So the value you are creating are flexible. How many things can you do? Some people buy stuff because of status. If I buy this, how do people see me? You'll be shocked. You know, human beings are very vain, vain. And, and look, you are a Christian, right? But you need to understand the society you are in. You need to understand the fact that in our world today, feelings is more important than fact. We are in the post-truth world. We are in the post-truth world. We are in the post-truth world. In the post-truth world, how people feel is more important than the fact on ground. How you make people feel by what you do, it's more important than what the things do. The container is more important than the content. Why you ensure the content is good, the container must be very, very, very attractive. This is where packaging comes in. We're in the post-truth world. In the post-truth world, Feeling is more important. So the way you package the product or service is critical. How does it make the people feel? If they are doing it, does it increase their status? If they are part of it, does it increase their status? Does it make, it, make them feel cool? Make them feel great? Make them feel nice? You know why? You need to, you know, when we begin to discuss promotion, I'll be speaking a lot about five drive of human that research has shown, five things that drive human beings, five things that, that drive us, that we are driven by those five things. So anything you create, must be connected to one of those human drives. If it doesn't connect to the human drive, you're wasting your time. You're joking. You must connect to a core human drive. And we'll be talking about that most likely next week. So status. So that's why I recommend that if you have a business, you might have the, the uh, luxury brand and the general brand. Luxury brand and the general brand. That means that you have a product or service that people that can pay are the ones that can buy it. And then you have a product or service that people that don't have so much can buy. And they are pretty much deliver similar value, but they are different in the way they are being delivered. And the content also are different. And I have a couple of that. I have training programs that are that's very expensive because of the kind of certificate you get also. <laughs> it's an international certification. And it's expensive. 
Then we have another training program that is more like a self-study that you are going to pay like 20% of what you pay for the other one. 20%. It's as low as 20%. In fact, we have another one that is lower than that 20%, maybe like 5%. So for those that feel, look, I need quality, I need, uh, some will say, look, I don't have up to that, but I still want to learn these things. How much, do you, don't you have a lower version? So you create different kind of brand to meet different market. For example, there's Pick Milk, there's Three Crown. Do you know the same company producing Pick Milk and Three Crown, the same company? The same company is producing picnic and three crown. And they're targeting different markets. Picnic is for the elite, three crown is for the masses. The same business is doing both. <laughs> and there are a lot of other brands like that in Nigeria. We have Kilogs. And we have the regular conflicts, NASCO. So what I'm trying to say is that you can create a luxury brand to be able to attract that market. Aesthetic appeal. How attractive and aesthetically pleasing is it? Your container is superior. Not that the content should not be good, but your container must be superior. What I mean by that is, they will see the container before they see the content. Because they will see the container before they see the content. That means you must do well with your content. It's so critical. You must do well with your container. Because they will see the container before they see the content. So the package must be very nice. The packaging must be very nice. If the packaging is not nice, it will be very, very tough for you to be able to, because you must attract people to be interested. So if they, if they, they are attracted by the package for the first time, subsequently, the content is the one that will attract them. But if they are not attracted the first time, then they will even know the value of the content in the first place. Emotion, how does it make them feel? How does it make them feel? Under status, how does it make them, how do they perceive, how do they make others perceive them? So if they see this product with me, for example, if you are using an iPhone, generally because iPhone is expensive, people see those that use iPhone as, hmm, maybe it's a class. Perception of people. And people do things for perception of people. You know, look at this statement. I am not what I think I am. I am not what you think I am. I am what I think you think I am. That is one of the things driving sales. I am not what I think I am. So people are not what they think they are. They don't behave the way they think they are. I am not what you think I am. People don't behave the way you think they are. They behave the way they think you think they are. So that means people uh, understanding and perception of themselves is based on what they feel people think about them. Human beings, we are complex. We are very complex. How people think they, you know, what that means is that someone will buy something because they will see me when I get there in Yoruba Palace, one back. They will, they will, how will I, how will I say that in English? For those that are not English, they are speak. How do I say that? As in, they will feel me. They will know that I've arrived. Okay, I've arrived. Yes, I've arrived. <laughs> Humans are very vain, vain, vain. And you know what? If you're a business person, you need to be able to understand that feeling and take advantage of that feeling sincerely. Because that's what makes people buy. So you need to understand what makes them buy. Emotion, how do they feel? And cost, ah, cost. Let me tell you, a lot of people,
take decision because of cost. People take decision. And that's why I say you have two brands, luxury brand and general brand. So that you don't reduce the value of the luxury brand because of the people that are concerned about cost. And that's what I've been able to do, that we have training programs, that like I said, that are cheaper. In fact, some are available online. It's e-learning. You don't need to get e-learning. You do, just you download the app and install it on your phone and we enable you and you can view the training on your phone or online on the web app. I mean, so I don't need to be with you. But for the other ones, they want to hear you. They want to ask questions. They want to be able to interact. Some people prefer physical class, but for COVID, they will have to now do online. <laughs> so you need to be able to build that kind of brand. Build that kind of brand. So cost is one of the major reasons. Some people will buy because it's expensive. Some people will not buy because it's not expensive. Cost is a sign of economic value. And if you are creating real value for people, don't be sorry for your cost. That's why I say create another brand so that people that will not be able to afford it. So that you will take advantage of all the opportunities in the market rather than reduce your price and be struggling to survive because, let me tell you the beauty of having a luxury brand. You know, sometimes if, if you are selling a product for 100K, you are selling another product for 20K. You see the product you are selling for 20K? You need five people for one of 100. That means if I put in a lot of effort, to get someone to pay 100, it saved me the stress of talking to five people to get to that 100. That means if my cost of doing business in a month is 80K, that means if I sell one in a month, I'm okay for that month because I've covered all my cost for the business for the month. That means if I struggle to sell two, ah, I'm fine. Whereas for the other brand, I would make effort to sell four to cover my costs for the month. Four. That's the beauty of luxury brand. The effort you put in in selling is worth the while because when you sell once, you cover a lot of cost. You cover a lot of cost. Before we close today, let me talk about the importance of technology as you prepare to do business. The world started with the age of gardening and hunting. Then we'll move on to the age of agriculture. Then we'll move on to the age of industrial age. Then we'll move on to the information age. Industrial age came in during the time of Renaissance, the awakening, when the technology breakthrough, after the, the Inquisition stopped and um, freedom to question came into Europe and desolation started in Europe, particularly in the United Kingdom. And in the last century, we entered the information age, where information is not driving agriculture, it's driving industrial revolution. But we are moving now to the creative age, where data is the new oil, the creative age, where data is king, the creative age, where we have the artificial intelligence, the creative age, the age of machine learning, the creative age, the age of big data. Now any business you want to do that will scale. If you don't have an input of internet in any way, no input of communication, of computer in any way, no input of telecommunication in any way, that business is dead on arrival. There must be internet, there must be computer, there must be telecommunication input in your business. There must be something you are using internet to do, maybe marketing. There must be something you are using computer to do, maybe designing. There must be something you are using telecommunication to do, maybe Marketing also, promotion on WhatsApp and the like. There must be input of all this. And I will talk about it also, that, about that promotion. But ensure that your business is leveraging on the power of technology to be able to grow. Leveraging on the power of technology to be able to grow. How do I use technology to engage the impact of my business? Technology is a lever. Technology is like a fulcrum. Technology brings leverage. Technology is like a pillar. Please ensure you find a way to leverage on technology. But for technology, 
when we are doing physical training, we can only train people in Lagos. Today, we train people outside the country. We have students outside the country. We have students outside Lagos. And they're able to write their exam for the certification program wherever they are in the world. That is the power of technology. And we'll supervise them and we'll be watching them and they can check, you know, they can cheat. And that's to tell you as a teacher, as a teacher, or you own a school, or you're running a school, that's the future of education. We should be able to, people should be able to school at home, read, learn, write exam without leaving their home. That's the power of technology. That's the power of technology. That's the power of technology. So always ask yourself, and if you can't answer that question, sit down with technology people. Tell them, this is what I do. How can I use technology to enhance my business? Either through promotion or to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of your operation or in customer service. I mean, there's so many ways you can engage technology. Technology is impacting business in, in an amazing way in our world. You really cannot do without technology. Please, don't even think of doing your business without thinking of technology inside. Please, don't do it. It's, it's going to be a lost cause. You can't scale, that business will die in just a matter of time. Please leverage on technology. And always be in the know, to know the new technology, the new technology, the new technology. Before you know it, you are able to do so much more because of what? Technology. Before I close today, look at the business that must be of interest to you. COVID showed us that, look, human beings are the most important element on the earth. So COVID revealed to us that the losers of businesses that human beings can do without tourism and leisure, aviation and maritime, Automobiles, construction and real estate, manufacturing of non essentials, financial services, education. You see all this? They are non essential for human survival. But financial services and education have been able to come into the winner zone by leveraging on technology. That's why we can have this conversation. So, medical supplies and services, food and retail. Personal and healthcare product, ICT, e commerce, agriculture are the winners. You are thinking of a business going to ask yourself if COVID struck again or we have another issue in the world that will require lockdown, God forbid, <laughs> can your business survive? 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 It's so important for you to think about this, actually. That you do a business that will survive all times. So it must be very essential, very, very essential. Like I said, education has gone into the, is coming into the winner zone of financial services. But a number of other things, non-essentials, mm. <laughs> non-essential like clothing, for example. But clothing, people see bought clothing during that period, but clothing, uh, and they use technology. You know, the more you leverage on technology, the more you reduce the impact of the lack of COVID. Because with technology, it becomes a lot easier. If your item can be moved without me moving there, like tourism and leisure, I need to go there. I need to go there. But for item that is manufactured, I can still deliver with technology. So if I leg it on e-commerce, I might be able to still deliver some non-essentials, like clothing. <laughs> All right, thank you very much everyone for listening again today. It's been an interesting time in this series. I mean, it, it, it's, 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 we've done this for more than three months. I think this is part 70, if I'm not mistaken. And we still have quite a bit to discuss. Probably we'll get to part 30, but definitely we'll finish before maybe November or, I mean, maybe December. I mean, <laughs> but we'll try to finish this year as much as possible. 
Uh, but I must thank all of us that have been listening. I've been getting some very interesting uh, feedback, and I appreciate your feedback. That makes it easier for us to want to continue. Uh, I want to thank the International Year Pastor for the privilege to be a blessing to you. And I want to say, for as many of us that put into practice, they'll be able to have a testimony to show that, look, this effort are really not in vain, but indeed a blessing to as many that have listened. Thank you very much for listening. See you next week. Father, we thank you for this session. We pray you give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to put this into practice. And be able to glorify your name thereby with our results in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. See you next week. Bye-bye.